the incidence of kidney stones these days is increasing uh, in kids especially so what do you think are the reasons for this right as you rightly said i mean if you look at literature the western literature will tell you that the incidence of kidney stones is a fraction in children as compared to adults now that's not true because what we are seeing around in india is actually that you get a lot more stones in children as well we have seen stones in children as young as 6 months of age uh, what we need to understand is urine contains various substances some of them are promoting stone formation and some of them are inhibiting stone formation to give you an example you have calcium in your urine you have oxalate in your urine which promote stone formation whereas you have magnesium and citrate which tend to inhibit stone formation so if the balance of these substances in the urine is changed for whatever reason then you will start forming stones so the cause for getting these stones is that this balance has been changed and there are various reasons to it and the commonest is as we discussed for urine infections the inadequate intake of water so when you have an inadequate intake the stone promoting substances tend to accumulate more and therefore you tend to get stones similarly if you don't eat enough fruits then the citrate content in your urine goes down which is a stone inhibiting substance and therefore you tend to form stones so these are very basic concepts you don't need a lot of medicine behind it but unfortunately these have been forgotten in uh, our daily life and that is the reason why stone formation has increased um, apart from this you have got increased junk food and increased sodium in the diet which tends to put out more calcium in the urine and that also increases your incidence of stone formation i've heard that certain foods they increase uh, the incidence of stone formation things like tomatoes and that, that that's a good question you asked because I actually make it a point to tell parents that their diets should not be restricted with any of these. The reason being that unless you demonstrate in in children 75% of stones have a metabolic origin which means that you can identify a cause as to why they are forming stones. So for example if you find an increased calcium in the urine the calcium in the urine is not necessarily related to the calcium in the diet. So there's no point in restricting calcium in the diet. similarly unless you show that there is increased oxalate in the urine stopping tomatoes or spinach makes no sense because the only reason for stopping it is you will have more oxalate in your diet and only if i can prove that you have got a condition called absorptive hyperoxaluria will i be <laughs> reducing the intake of these substances otherwise most of the children as long as they have an adequate intake of fluid do not need to restrict their diet of course they need to reduce their junk food uh, as it contains a lot of salt because the more salt you eat the more calcium comes out in the urine and therefore you tend to form stones so what kind of symptoms could alert parents that you know it might be mm. having kidney most of the kidney stones that get picked up might actually be an incidental finding because the child has undergone a sonography for some other reason and therefore you have picked up stones but in terms of symptoms the one that scares parents is the presence of blood in the urine because you see the child passing red colored urine and that may be associated with pain in the abdomen and that is the reason why parents get worried about it and therefore investigations reveal now having said that we need to be careful about these incidental pick up of stones because very often you see sonographies showing tiny stones in the kidneys which may actually not be stones because they are just end on views of vessels which are going to be treated as stones if you don't diagnose them appropriately so the common symptoms to answer your question is usually blood in the urine or abdominal pain so how do you go about treating these right now there are depending on the size of the stone and the position of the stone we need to decide whether the symptoms that the child is getting is attributed to the stone because very often you will have a tiny stone sitting in the kidney and the child gets abdominal pain which is quite clearly not related to the stone that is present on the sonography scan if the stone is less than 5 mm in size in children very often the stone can pass out but you need to help it so and helping again apart from medicines the basic idea is increase your fluid intake so at the end of this day i hope all parents go home and make their child drink a jug of water but the second part is if you don't treat the underlying condition that is causing these stones they're going to keep on forming stones every year and with every stone there is a likelihood that they will damage a part of the kidney so they need to be very careful about that 
And the treatment for these conditions, which I talked about, is very simple. So you need to identify why the child is forming stones and you need to treat that. If the stone is bigger than five millimeters, very often it will get stuck in the urinary tract and that will need surgical intervention. So a surgeon may need to be involved. These days, there are many non-surgical methods to right? I mean, apart from the medical. Right. What we talk is conservative management, which is what I described about increased fluid intake. But apart from that, based on how big the child is and how big the stone is, there are methods, for example, you can have extracorporeal shockwave therapy to fragment the stone, or you can have actually uh, laparoscopic methods to get rid of the stone in that particular position, or you might actually go in and do open surgery to take out the stone. For more such information related to your health, log on to health.india.com.